Okay, good morning everybody. Hi, my name's Viv Burr and I'm going to be talking to you today about um, some, um, or a particular method arising from an approach called personal construct psychology. I hope you'll find this enjoyable and interesting and um, you know, maybe for some of you it will turn out to be something that you feel might be appropriate to use in your own research. Now what's distinctive about this approach is that it's kind of unlike some other approaches that you might learn about on, um, on methods modules, uh, things like surveys and questionnaires, that attempt to find out what perhaps a group of people think about a topic, so looking at people's opinions or attitudes towards, um, for example, crime um, or, um, or the National Health Service or whatever. So, you know, what do the people of Huddersfield think about crime levels or, you know, what do middle class versus... Um, working class people think about um, NHS services. Now constructing uh, surveys to investigate things like that means that you have to think up suitable things to ask people about, things that are going to be relevant to the population that you're studying, questions that are going to be meaningful to your target population. But often it's an unwarranted assumption by the researcher that everyone attaches the same meaning and importance to things that they do. So we're going to start off this to, by demonstrating this point, uh, by doing a, a quick exercise with you. So I'm just going to write three things on the whiteboard. You should spend a few minutes thinking about A healthy diet, a good hotel, and a bad father. So I want you to spend just a few minutes on your own thinking about what comes to mind when you think of those three things. So make a, a short list, um, say two or three things for each one. What comes to mind when you think of what a healthy diet is for you? or what a good hotel is for you, or what a bad father is for you. Okay, so I'm going to give you probably less than five minutes to do all of that. Okay, I think you should all have had the opportunity to write at least a couple of things for each of those. I'm going to ask for some feedback from you now. So, <clears throat> can you just um, call out whatever you've got for a healthy diet, and I'll try and get as many of these down as possible. Three meals a day. Three, uh, three, but somebody said balanced. Three meals a day, was it? Three meals a day. Eating a lot of fruit and vegetables. A lot of fruit and vegetables. Five a day. <laughs> fruit and veg, five a day. Pardon? It must be continual before filing that the body required for growth and prevention. I can't write all that down. Can you condense it a little bit? Is for half of the food value. Like the, the food value. Food value. Yeah. Nutrition. I think. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, protein, vitamins. So what what sort of phrase captures that for you? Balanced. That's what balanced. It balanced diet. We've got we've got balanced. Mm -hmm. the, is it, it are you uh, would you like to say something other than balanced? Does it do you want to it doesn't matter if you feel that what other people have said is exactly what you mean, that's fine. But if you feel it's slightly different, I want to hear about it. Pardon? Sure. Drink. Drink? Gin and tonic? <laughs> a healthy diet is? Water. Water. Might not last very long on that, but... Plentiful. Plentiful. Okay. <coughs> Nutritious. Nutri nu nutritious. Okay. Let's leave that there for a moment. A good hotel then. Similar. Excellent service. Excellent service. Clean. Excellent service. Clean. Comfy. Pardon? Comfy. Comfy. Five star. Five yeah, star. Luxury, yeah. Pardon? Good service. Good service. Good service. Good food. Good food. Free alcohol. 
Free <laughs> I've never been in one of those hotels. <laughs> you have to tell me where they are. <laughs> A, a, a small price, but it's all good value for money. Good value, right? We've just got room to put that in there. Okay. Right, and finally, a bad father. Irresponsible. Father. Irresponsible. Let me get down here. Irresponsible. Yep. Abusive. Abusive. Hello? More caring for More caring. Not caring. Yeah. Not caring. Bad role model? Is it, is it not caring for children? Yeah, for the children. For children. What was that about a role model? Bad role model. Bad role model. Selfish. Selfish. Absent. Absent. That's it? Okay, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Was there one more? Uh, I was just going to say failure to provide. Failure to provide. Right, okay, good. Do you know, every year I do this, I think I should have, I should treat it as a piece of research to see what students come up with each year because there's an awful lot of similarity in some respects. Well, odd bits and pieces that are different, but year over year, you know, the number of times I've seen abusive and absent turn up in Bad Father, you know, I think every year that comes up. Um, and I mean, I think. You know, notions of healthy diet seem to, to you know, often f focus on things like it balanced or, um, you know, plenty of fruit and veg and so on. Um, so that, that would be, that's interesting itself to see uh, just what sort of consistency and change there is in, um, in students' views of these things. But the point I wanted to, to use this exercise to illustrate is that Although there's some commonality between you, there's some, you know, that I think you can, both, you can all understand where everybody's coming from here. There are differences in what comes to mind for each of you when you think of these issues. So, for example, with a good hotel, you know, if you were doing a survey for the George Hotel in Huddersfield and they said, you know, we want you to find out what people in the area think about the George Hotel, whether it's a good hotel. You know, if you were to go out into you know, to, uh, to do a survey in, in West Yorkshire and say, you know, do you know the George Hotel in Huddersfield? I wonder if you can tell me, you know, on a scale from one to five, how good a hotel you think it is. Well, we don't know what kinds of issues are coming to mind for people when they say that. For some people, they might be thinking, well, it's a very clean hotel. Yes, it's, it's a good hotel. Others might be thinking, well, you know, sometimes they give you free alcohol. It's a great hotel. Or, you know, they, the service is excellent. You know, that's a good hotel. So we don't know the basis upon which people are mating that, making their ratings. So some people may give it a one and say, thinking, well, you don't ever get any free, al free alcohol, that's no use. Others may give it a five, you know, it's very, very clean and comfortable. So we don't know um, what kinds of questions to ask people um, when we want to know about how they are judging things. What they're, you know, we don't know what's meaningful to the individual. So in some pieces of research, not always, but sometimes we need to go a step back and find out what it is that's meaningful to individual people or to a group of people um, to, in order to be able to um, work out what kinds of questions are going to be appropriate and meaningful to them to, to ask. <clears throat> so, this is the fundamental principle underlying the idea of personal construct psychology, or PCP for short. It originated um, in the early 20th century, first part of the 20th century, with an American psychologist called George Kelly. And the aim of personal construct psychology for him, he was a psychotherapist, and he was explicitly interested in examining what is unique about the person's uh, way of thinking about the world, what was meaningful to the individual, what are the idiosyncratic meanings that events hold for people. So personal construct psychology isn't about placing individuals along universal dimensions like extroversion or introversion, the idea that, that everybody has 
a certain quantity of a particular trait or ability. But the idea of personal construct psychology, rather, is to investigate the uniqueness of each person, to look at what kinds of meanings each person uses when looking at their own world of experience. And the meanings that individuals use to understand and make sense of their experience, Kelly called constructs. So this is why the approach became called personal construct psychology, because it investigates the constructs that are personal to you in making sense of and understanding your lived experience. <coughs> now I want to go back to the examples that you've just created here, <coughs> excuse me, to make another point. I want the people who supplied these ideas to tell me what the opposite for them might be. Now I'm not asking you here for the linguistic opposite, so the opposite of good is bad, the opposite of um, healthy is unhealthy. Right? But I'm not asking for those, I'm not asking for dictionary definitions. I'm asking what for you might be the opposite, the meaningful opposite of the word that you supplied to me. So who said balanced for a healthy diet? Okay. As opposed to a diet that is <laughs> don't, don't don't help us because what we want <laughs> what we want is the person's own meanings, not what everybody else might think. Unbalanced. unbalanced. Okay, it's fine. That is unbalanced. Okay. Who said three meals a day? Who did? As opposed to a diet which is in control. Not controlled. Okay. Who said a lot of fruit and veg? Okay. As opposed to a diet which. Yes, I have a think about it. Maybe a little sugar. No, no, don't, 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 don't make suggestions to each other at this I stage, love, okay? A lot of sugar and fat, maybe. A lot of sugar and fat. And fat. Okay. okay. Who said five a day? Um, yes, so five a day in your diet as opposed to a diet which. Cakes and bones and stuff. Cakes and buns. <laughs> Is that right? Cakes and buns. Yeah? Yeah, cakes and buns. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I heard properly. This is water. Okay. A diet with water as opposed to a diet with no water. <laughs> Equally bad. <laughs> a plentiful diet as opposed to a starve or starving yourself. Starving yourself. In the context of doing a diet. Okay. Um, dieting. 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 And someone said nutritious at the back there. Yes, mm -hmm. nutritious as opposed to non nutritious. Non -nutritious. Now, I think just doing that exercise, you know, the fact that you found it very difficult not to shout out your answers to other people's. Um, and questions suggests that there may have been some variety there in the opposites that you might have supplied as opposed to the person themselves. So, you know, some people, you know, balanced, what's the opposite of balanced for you? Maybe not unbalanced, maybe it's something else, or three meals a day. What would you have said the opposite of a three meals a day diet was? You know, perhaps you wouldn't have said not controlled. So let's carry on and do a good hotel. So who said excellent service? As opposed to a hotel which poor service. Has poor rudeness. service. Pardon? Rudeness. Poor service mm. and rudeness. Mm. Okay. Who said clean? So as opposed to a hotel which is unhygienic. Unhygienic. That's what, it, what about when, when I said clean was that it was hygienic. Okay, that's good. Who said comfy? Okay. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Five star. Not so bad. 
<laughs> That's a beautiful thought. No? Okay, so a good hotel is, is a five-star hotel. It just rounds up all those. Okay, so let's say it's a good, it's a good all-round hotel. It does everything well, mm-hmm. as opposed to a hotel that... <laughs> okay, we'll leave that. We'll leave that one. We'll leave that one open. A hotel that has good service, yeah, as opposed to one that has bad service. Has no. I want. I want. I want the person who provided this label to provide the opposite for me. So try to avoid shouting out what your answers would be. I think I. Think I said it. Okay. Um, I think uh, wait, uh, so long wait. A long wait. Long, a long wait for your request to be fulfilled. So a, a, a long, long wait for what? For your request to be fulfilled. A long so wait for requests. Yeah. Right. A long wait. I'll, I'll put that in short. A long yeah, wait for long wait. for requests. But yeah. I think we know we know that means a long wait for requests to be fulfilled. Good food. Supposed to be hot food, cold food. Cold food. Poor. Cold food. Okay. Buffet style. Pardon? Buffet style. Buffet style. <laughs> Not that you have high requirements. Okay. Um, free alcohol versus massively inflated prices like some hotels. Massively. Mini bad prices. Yeah. Inflated. Massively inflated. Prices. Prices. Because you're a captive audience. <laughs> to a captive audience. <laughs> um, good value. Who said good value? As opposed to a hotel which... Um, extortionate prices. Extortionate prices. Okay. Right. And finally, a bad father. Who said irresponsible? Responsible. Responsible. Who said abusive? Nurturing. Nurturing. Okay. Who said not caring for children? Yes, as opposed to a father who always caring. Always caring. Bad role model. Positive role model. Positive role Selfish. Selfless, I think. Selfless. Yeah, it can only be the opposite. Pardon? I can only think of selfless. That's okay. Absent. Who said absent? Thank you. Thank you. Who's me? Who's me? Daily presence. Mm-hmm. And failing to provide. As opposed to um, uh, food on the table and money in the bank. Food on the table. Gosh. Table. Money in the bank. Okay. Right. Thank you, everybody, for that. <coughs> Okay, I think that the process of doing this has illustrated that you know, each of you has rather different ways of understanding what might be the opposite of these terms. And when we find out what the opposite is for a person, we're sometimes quite surprised. So who, let's have a look, who had, when we, when we thought about clean, who had something other than unhygienic as something in their mind that might be the opposite of a clean hotel? Anybody thought of any other any other word other than unhygienic? No? Dirty. Pardon? Dirty. Dirty. Okay, so somebody else thought of dirty. Okay. Tatty. Pardon? Tatty. Tacky. Okay. What about... Um,
balanced diet. Who thought of something other than unbalanced? Fatty diet. Fatty. Incomplete. Pardon? Incomplete. Incomplete. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's just have one from fathers. Um, who thought of something that was the opposite of abusive, that wasn't exactly nurturing? Anybody think of anybody had an opposite? Pardon? Caring. Okay. Any others? Okay. I think we can begin to see the issue here that what is the opposite of a term for one person isn't the opposite for another. It's what is meaningfully, what, what is a, it's not exactly an opposite, it's a contrast. What is the contrast for people, for these things? And the person that we're speaking to, the person who um, volunteered these terms, doesn't necessarily think of the contrast in the same terms as you might do. And we can see here, for example, that you know, we've got abusive versus nurturing, but for another person, the contrast might be abusive versus caring. But then we've got... Um, <coughs> Um, we've got always caring here as opposite to not caring for children so we've got caring as a, as a term which has a diff- slightly different opposites for two different people here we've got clean as the idea and you can say okay we all know whether a hotel is clean or not but for one person the issue is whether it's actually whether you can see dirt around another person is, is it hygienic you know, or, is, or does it look tacky so the idea is that even if we were to, to incorporate these terms into our survey, we still don't necessarily know exactly what the dimension of meaning is for the person. We have to know what the contrast is for them to truly understand what that issue is about. And this was George Kelly's point um, when he thought of the idea of constructs. Because he thought of constructs as bipolar, as having two poles, uh, this pole here and that pole there. So two ends to the dimension. So a construct isn't just one word, it isn't just a concept. It's a dimension of meaning that you can go along. So for this person, um, a healthy diet can be one ranging from a diet where you have five a day to ones where it's nothing but cakes and buns. Or for this person it can be three meals a day, ranging along a dimension towards being completely uncontrolled. Um, for, um, For this person, a father can be a bad father because they are absent, ranging along a dimension towards having a daily presence. So Kelly's idea was that we have to understand the dimension of meaning to really understand how the person makes sense of their experience. It's not enough to just elicit um, these words or phrases. We have to know what the contrast is for people. So constructs are always bipolar. They have two poles. For example, having a friendly atmosphere versus being unwelcoming. That is a construct. So all these things that you've come up with here are constructs. And they are all personal to the person who volunteered them. Okay? (coughs) And everybody... There's a fair degree of overlap here. You know, there's, there's quite a lot of similarity in some of the constructs. But they're not identical. The The dimension of meaning is slightly different for each person. So when we're thinking about healthy diets, good hotels, bad fathers, or anything else, we place these things along these dimensions. And we're often not aware that we're doing this. So when you walk into a hotel or you go to a hotel and you think, yeah, that was a good hotel or that was a bad hotel, sometimes you don't even consciously know how you're making that judgment. But Kelly's view is that silently, at the ba- in the background, you're making these judgments based upon the constructs that are meaningful to you.